All right, so we're starting a new chapter, uh, chapter 10. It's all about the mole. Um, you have heard of the mole before, and hopefully this is uh, mostly review for most of you. But um, let's see uh, what you guys remember. So we're going to be talking about the mole. Um, so... The mole is probably like the most important concept in chemistry or one of the most important concepts in chemistry. Um, so, you know, let's get to it. And the goal is to break things down and make it um, less complicated and as least confusing as possible for you guys. Give me one second. Okay, so the main question that we're trying to answer is how do you convert between counting and the mass and the volume of something? And that's what all of chapter 10 is about. Um, these are like the building blocks for uh, chapters 11 and 12, which are going to get uh, a lot more complicated. So, you know, how do we convert between these different things? Okay, so let's just start with a simple example. Okay, have you ever bought apples or any other fruit? at the store that's a rhetorical question uh if you haven't you will at some point in your life all right so there are two different ways that fruit can be measured when you're at the store okay by count okay number of apples or by mass the weight of apples so sometimes you'll see like a lot of times for bananas like for example if you go to trader joe's they charge you per banana but if you go to like market basket they charge you by the number of pounds of bananas you get. So, you know, depending on what grocery store you're at, or maybe even depending on the day, they might charge you by the number or they might charge you by the weight. Okay. So you understand this concept, um, at least theoretically, because, you know, we use it when we grocery shop all the time, or even when we're buying food or other things. Okay. Now atoms, they are very tiny. Okay. So they're so small that it takes a ton of atoms to make anything approaching a measurable weight, which is why we need to use this concept of counting the number of atoms, okay, and mass, and like how do we convert between the two to get any numbers that are useful at all to us um, when we are operating and doing calculations in the real world. So put a pin in that, we'll come back to the atom. All right, but let's start with uh, some simpler examples, just to prove to you that you understand this concept that we're going to be going over in chapter 10, whether it seems intimidating or not. Okay. And the goal is to not be intimidated. Okay. So let's say your mom sends you to the grocery store and asks you to get two dozen apples. All right. And then, you know, apples cost a dollar per pound and one dozen apples equals five pounds. Okay. And you're just trying to figure out how much will you pay? How much money do you need to bring? Now, I do not think that as 17 and 18 year olds, or maybe even 19 year olds, I don't know how old you guys are. Okay. Like this is not an intimidating problem, all right? You could get out a piece of paper and you could probably figure out this problem, okay? Now, we're gonna go over it now and then you're gonna see that with the mole, which is a much bigger number, you're, it's gonna be the same exact type of math. So the reason why I start with this apples example is to prove to you that you understand the basic concepts of how to do these calculations. And so you don't wanna be intimidated when you get to it being a little bit more complicated when we're talking about chemicals, okay? So a dollar equals one pound of apples, all right? And then we know that one dozen apples, okay, I wrote that wrong. Oh wait, no, I wrote that right, I lied. Okay, so we know that one dollar, a, a pound of apples costs one dollar, so one dollar equals one pound of apples. And then we also know that one dozen apples equals five pounds of apples. Okay, so if you go back to what we did in chapter three, okay, we can set these up into ratios, all right? So $1 equals one pound of apples. We can turn that into the ratio $1 over one pound of apples, all right? One dozen apples equals five pounds of apples. We can turn that into the ratio of five pounds of apples over one dozen apples, okay? Please refer back to the chapter three lectures um, if you can't remember this or if you need a refresher, all right? but this is something that we've done before. Now, to solve this problem, we just need to set up the ratios in a way that the units will cancel. So I already set it up for you guys, okay? So two dozen apples, 
then you multiply it by five pounds of apples per dozen of apples. All right, so here, I can't annotate on this, but dozen apples will cancel, so that's gone. All right, and then you multiply it by one dollar per one pound of apples, and then your pound of apples is gone. Okay, and then you're left with dollars, which is what the problem is asking you for. Okay, so you do all this math out, two times five times one, divided by one, divided by one. All right, so you'll get that the answer is $10, all right? So these apples are gonna cost you $10, okay? Give me a thumbs up if, you know, this, like this makes sense to you, like how I figure this out. Okay, so give me a, uh, I don't know, other reaction, like an X, if this doesn't make sense to you. Cool, so seven people are here. All the rest of you who are not here, get here, all right? You're supposed to be in class, come on. Okay, so let's move on to the mole, okay? If you understood that example, okay, you, are, you already understand how to use the mole. So don't get intimidated. We're gonna be using bigger numbers, but it's just like, you can do it. Uh, if we did it with the apples, we can do it with atoms. All right, so you know that one dozen equals 12, right? Every time I have a dozen, if I have a dozen apples, if I have a dozen people, if I have a dozen, um, I don't know, cups. Okay, thirsty. If I have a dozen cups, okay, I have 12 of each of those things. All right, so for the mole, okay, people get worried about this, but there's nothing to worry about. It's the same idea, except for for one mole, it's not 12. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, this is called Avogadro's number. So it's a huge number, okay? It is a huge number, admittedly, but it's still not a number that you should be intimidated by because you can just ignore the 10 to the 23rd and just add it to the end of your answer uh, whenever you want, okay? And I'll show you how to do that later, okay? so. Why do we use moles? Well, like I said at the top, atoms are so small, that's how many of a given atom or molecule we need to get a measurable weight, all right? So that is a number that will give us, you know, a weight that actually can be used, okay? We're gonna be talking about this tomorrow, but the molar mass is the mass of one mole of an element, and that's also equal to the mass you can find on the periodic table. So if I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of something, then they will weigh the number of grams that it says on the periodic table. So when I say that, it gets confusing, but if I show you an example, it's much simpler. Okay, so if we look at oxygen on the periodic table, you see that 15.999 there? All that means is that if I have a mole of oxygen atoms, they will weigh 15.999 grams, all right? So a mole of oxygen atoms is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms, all right? And so a mole of them will always weigh 15.999 grams, okay? Again, don't get worried by the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd huge number. It's the same idea. If I said I had a dozen oxygen atoms, you'd be like, oh, you have 12, okay? So just start training your brain to being like, if I'm like, I have a mole of oxygen atoms, then instead of being like, oh, I have 12, you say, oh, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. No big deal, okay? Like we just know, you know, it's just a number that you just kind of lock into your head. All right, so where it gets a little bit more complicated is for mole calculations. So let's start again with an easy example, or not easy, but simpler example. Okay, so how many apples are there in 4.5 dozen apples? I bet you, you already know the answer. Okay, like this is not, you know, you could figure this out, all right? Again, we know that one dozen apples equals 12 apples. And so you can rewrite that, like I was saying, remember from chapter three into two ratios, either one dozen apples over 12 apples or 12 apples over one dozen apples, right? Because those things are equivalent. Remember conversions, okay, we can turn them into ratios, okay? So to actually do this problem, when you're solving it, you just do 4.5 dozen apples times, and then you just pick which of the ratios 
has a dozen apples on the bottom so that they cancel. So you just do 4.5 times 12 apples over a dozen apples equals 54 apples. Okay. Without writing all this out, I'm pretty sure that the majority of you knew that it was 54 apples to begin with. But I'm writing this out because this is what you're actually doing in your head when you're figuring it out. Okay. So thumbs up if you understand this example, how we got from dozen apples to numbers of apples. Okay. So we just do 4.5 dozen apples times 12 apples per dozen and we get 54. All right. Let's change it up a little. Let's use moles. Okay. How many apples are in 4.5 moles of apples? Well, instead of one dozen equals 12, this time we're just going to say one mole of apples equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd apples. But after that, everything we set up is the same. Instead of writing it as 1 over 12, we're just going to write it as 1 mole apples over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over 1 mole. Okay, and then we're just going to solve it. So now I'm going to do 4.5 moles of apples times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd apples per mole of apples. And again, see this makes our mole apples cancel. And then here's the trick, or it's not a trick, but here's the thing with using the mole. You see how this is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? Well, just ignore the 10 to the 23rd and just do 6.02 times 4.5. Okay, and then you'll get this number here, 27.09. And then just add the times 10 to the 23rd on the back end. Okay, it's as simple as that. All right, so even if you don't have a scientific calculator, you can do that. And then once you get to here, all right, what you should do, um, ideally is convert this into scientific notation, which means move this decimal place over one and then fix the exponent, all right? So you can convert 27.09 times 10 to the 23rd apples to 2.709 times 10 to the 24th apples. Again, refer back to chapter three lectures for why that works. But, you know, rule of thumb, you move the decimal place one point, it's a bigger number than you started with. So you change it from 10 to the 23rd to 10 to the 24th. Okay, so if you look at this and compare it to this, it's the exact same setup. So all you got to do is now worry about that times 10 to the 23rd. But like I said, you can just separate it out and deal with it at the end. Okay, so this is why I'm saying that, you know, using moles is not much more complicated than doing the problems with dozens, which all of you guys are pretty comfortable doing. Okay, so... We were talking about apples. I'm going to change it. We're going to talk about sodium atoms now, but we're going to do the exact same thing. So how many sodium atoms are in 3.5 moles of sodium? Well, one mole of sodium is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. Again, set up my ratios. One mole of Na, I switched to the element formula, uh, excuse me, the symbol. One mole of Na over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms Na or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms Na over one mole Na, right? These are my two ratios that I have to use. Okay. And then I just solve it. Same thing. 3.5 moles of Na times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms Na over one mole of Na so that my moles cancel. And then, like I said, ignore the 10 to the 23rd, just do 6.02 times 3.5. I get 21.07 and then it's 21.07 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. All right. Convert that to scientific notation, you get 2.107 times 20, 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium. Mr. Chung, you're going too quickly. Slow down. This is on video. Okay. If you're having trouble following, go back and watch it again and watch it again and watch it again. Okay. If you've watched it three times and paid attention and are still lost, then you have your permission, you have my permission to text me and ask for help. Okay, but the reason why this is on video is, you know, when you hear it a couple of times, it should start, you know, and especially you keep going through each, each example, right? It should start kind of locking itself into your brain um, that this is how you do these things. Okay, so one more problem to do. How many, oh, whoops. Yes, okay, I didn't write out the other problem. All right, so I'll have to do it now. Okay, so what if we flipped it? If I had 
3.5 if I had 3.5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium how many moles do I have okay now this is the same right it's still one mole of sodium equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd okay so that's the same the ratios are the same but solving it is going to be different this time okay so solving it this time i'm going to say 3.5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium okay and then Okay, so, okay, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna have 3.5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium times, now this time, what am I gonna do? Okay, am I going to use one mole of sodium over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or am I gonna use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over one mole? All right, which one do I want on the bottom? Okay, Alani says in the chat, flip it over, and she is correct. So I'm going to put one mole of sodium on the top. Okay, and then on the bottom, I'm going to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so now I have everything flipped. All right, so I'm going to do 3.5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of Na times one mole of Na divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms Na. Okay, and so for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, see these 10 to the 23rds? We can treat them separately. So 10 to the 23rd over 10 to the 23rd, they cancel atoms of Na cancel. So all I'm pl plugging into my calculator is 3.5 divided by 6.02. Okay, and that'll give you about 0.5. I don't know exactly what it'll be, but it'll give you about 0.5 moles of Na. All right, this is a freaking mess. Okay, I'm gonna have to redo this again later, but you get the general gist of what's happening here. All right, so if you're going from atoms to moles, you just flip the ratio over, okay? And then uh, you can solve for that, okay? Apologies for the crappy last slide, but other than that, you know, I will, for the molar mass one that I'm doing with you guys tomorrow, I'll redo this one, but this is uh, the basics of how to convert from moles to atoms and vice versa, okay? And remember, it doesn't matter if we're talking about atoms or if we're talking about apples, okay? When you have the mole, it's always the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, just like dozen is always 12. So we're just gonna keep on using that.